Hello, Guardians. Welcome back to Tower Casuals, the Destiny podcast. We are live here on twitch.tv slash Tower Casuals. I'm your host, Corey Deergan. Alongside me, as always, is the lightsaber-wielding, sandwich munching, vault-dwelling, Jotun Toten, sandwich casual himself, Josh Finney. God, I love it. I love how I have so many names. My triumphant return after I took a week for vacation. Triumphant return to Tower Casuals. I hate you. Don't hey, do Corey. it. Don't do it. Don't you do I it. brought something just for Corey, y'all. Don't you do it. Don't you dare. And then Jesus told the disciples, take, eat this bread in remembrance of me. I hate you so much. I don't know if that's how it goes. I haven't been to church in a while, but I'm pretty sure it has something to do with breaking the bread and getting some Welch's grape juice. It's fine. It's all I may not have the grape juice, but I do have a Hawaiian barbecue sub mm. from Earl of Sandwich. You know you know what the real blood of Christ is? Earl of Sandwich barbecue sauce. So funny you should say that because <laughs> this has <laughs> ham, chicken, pineapple, and that Earl of Sandwich tangy barbecue sauce on it. Mmm. Mm. Mm. I hate you so much. Dear God, this is so good. There's going to be a close-up on, on YouTube of that. You just taking a big bite of that. It's fine. Man, I'm this so jealous. My third, this is my third Hawaiian barbecue sub in the last week. So I'm very jealous and upset, actually. Very upset. I ate really good on vacation, Corey. Like when Earl Sandwich is not the top thing that you've had, it doesn't even like. I know you five. sent me you vacation. sent me the breakfast Ronto wrap, which I also am very upset that I didn't get to eat. Um, the blue milk sent the blue milk. Mm-hmm. Very upset, Josh. I have to tell you, I'm, I'm a. Uh, I had a few drinks in the cantina. Yeah. How'd that go? They were. Uh, they were a bit stronger than the fizzy tauntaun that I had the last time I went. Hmm. I got the uh, the jet juice, and uh, I got something that had half and half in it. Oh, boy. Yeah, so you know how, like, you get meat sweats? Try having dairy sweats in fucking Florida when it's raining outside. Honestly, that sounds it's terrible. terrible. It's absolutely terrible. It was a great drink, but I could start telling the second we walked out of the bar, oh, God, I have made a horrible horrible mistake what have i done it was the uh it, oh it's called the the skyhopper mm. the uh the t16 skyhopper it had like uh god i i don't know i'm gonna have to look up what this is because it's gonna bother me but all in all i drank my way around epcot i ate a lot of food at the food and wine festival we had like probably the best cake I've ever had in my life on the first night because there was nowhere open to get food when Ray and his wife got in. Mm-hmm. Um, everything is like closed at 10 o'clock. So this bakery was open till like 11, though. So we went and got coffee and cake. And dude, the cookies had so many chocolate chips on them. You could not see the cookie. That's amazing. Was it that place in downtown? We went to Gideon's. Yeah. 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 Dude, that I swear to God, I got diabetes just from looking at the counter. I mean, it was it was yeah. that bad. Yeah, it was it was incredible, dude. I, uh, I spent three days eating a piece of cake while you were there. I watched some Disney food blog because I'm a of course I'm a DFB guide aficionado. Right, love that channel. They were showing those cookies. And I'm like, I'm like, I bet Josh is eating this right now, dude. We got that on the first night, and then we got pizza, Uber Eats to the to the hotel. Because nothing else was open. Right. And there was, like, no room service we could get or anything. Mm. It was actually a shockingly good pizza. Ray just ordered the first thing he saw. We got, like, that. We got chicken wings. We got buffalo wings. And then we we ordered mozzarella sticks, okay? Mm. There was no cheese in our mozzarella sticks. It was There was enough cheese to, like, hold the breadcrumbs together to give you the impression you got cheese sticks. Hmm. Where was this at? There was a thin layer of cheese. I don't know. It was some place that was right off property. Oh, where you? Disney. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. Ugh. God, how do you? So here, here, here is the drink that I got. Okay, I, I need, I need the public to understand why I had dairy sweats. Okay, as mm. gross as that sounds, I'm going to keep saying it. It's called the T16 Skyhopper. It had vodka. All right, so we're all on board here. Vodka, mm. melon liqueur, mm. kiwi, mm. and half and half. 
Hmm. Now, believe it or not, this was a delicious contraption, but I needed it to be about half the size and I needed it to be like 40 degrees outside huh. to really enjoy. This is like an alcoholic Starbucks drink, I feel. Hmm. It, that that one, it was it was good, but it was definitely not something I would order again. It's the first drink I've had there that I would never order again. Mm. The other one I had was the Jet Juice, which had Maker's Mark, uh, Chile liqueur, Acai, white grape juice, and lemon juice in it. Mm. And it was like a glorified shot, basically, because that some bitch was strong. Mm. Mm. There was way more, and I was okay with this part. There was way more bourbon than anything else in there. Yeah. That sounds. But like I, I mean, I encourage everybody go look at the menu for Ocas Cantina at some point. Just these fucking drinks do not look like they're going to be good. They, they look good. They don't sound good on paper, though. Like a lot of these sound like just outright disgusting. On I mean, paper. to be fair, a lot of things don't sound good when you describe them. Like some of the menu stuff at Disney, anyway. But when, when I describe it as giving me dairy sweats. <laughs> yeah. Dairy sweats, you are. God, dude, it, it, I still don't think anything beats the tingling foam of the fizzy tom tom, though. Yeah. Um, even the girls getting non-alcoholic drinks, like those were even like really cool. Yeah. Um, Ray's wife got the uh, the carbon freeze, which is lemon lime Powerade, strawberry blueberry, and green apple like boba pearls, mm -hmm. and it looked like it was bubbling the entire time. That's cool. It was really cool. Like it was actually bubbling the whole time. That's cool. It sounds like it sounds like one of those drinks it you really get. Dope. It sounds like one of those drinks you get in Pandora over at Animal Kingdom. It was basically that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was that, and then they had an alcoholic version, uh, the Bespin Fizz, which is a Bacardi rum, um, a yuzu puree, pomegranate juice, white cranberry, and what they call a cloud swirl, which I'm pretty sure is just like dry ice in the bottom of it to make it bubble. It was really cool, though. Like, that, I urge everyone, if you ever get the chance, get a reservation, go there. It will change your life. I'm so glad that we went there and spent 45 minutes with a waiter that looked like a Dollar General Matt Damon. <laughs> well, okay, so when his mask was up, his eyes and his nose made him look like John Mulaney, and then he took off the mask, and we were like, because I was like, have you ever been told you look like John Mulaney? He's like, I don't know who the hell that is. What? And then he took his mask mm. off, and he looked like a discount Matt Damon. Mm. He looked like Matt Damon if he had, like, grown a really patchy beard and had made some questionable life decisions involving meth at some point. Hmm. Meth Damon. Meth Damon. No, we can't call him Meth Damon. That's Jesse Plemons <laughs> in Breaking Bad. <laughs> we can't do that. Wait, come on. That's a good one, though. Come on. It, it was good. It was good. But, you know, great trip. Much needed. I cried when I made my lightsaber. You got the one with the little uh, bone, was, the bone handle, right at the bottom. I did. I got the one with the rancor tooth for my yeah. pommel. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a, the sole reason why I chose that particular lightsaber model is so I could get the rancor tooth, mm -hmm. and for like no other reason. I could have easily just bought the tooth to put on as my pommel, mm -hmm. but nope. I went for the whole thing. I liked the whole uh, leather and bone structure of it. Uh, it's really cool though. It was cool. Uh, butter beer was basically uh, cream soda with butterscotch in it. So it oh yeah, you guys went to Universal. You guys went to Universal. One. We, we went to Universal for a day. It was not worth it. Hmm. Yeah, I was rather upset. I'm not a roller coaster guy, so that like automatically killed like three quarters of the rides. Yeah, and it literally was a monsoon at like twelve thirty in the afternoon. So we were all like, "Well, fuck this. I guess we're leaving." Yeah, hmm. it was pretty. It was pretty. It was pretty rough. That sucks. But. We, we got more rain on this trip than I've ever gotten going to Florida in my life. Oh, really? We When we go, like, it rains, like, all the time when we go for some reason. I but, mean, so on our first day, like, on Thursday morning, it's, like, 10 o'clock in the morning, and it was pouring rain. And it rained all day that day. So I was really glad that we started with the Jungle Cruise. Hmm. It's a good before one. Before it started raining. It's a good one. I... I am a big fan of the Jungle Cruise, Josh. Are you a big fan of the Morning Dole Whip, Corey? I'm, all, yeah. Who's not? Uh, that that was akin to a spiritual experience, I think. Let me tell you when I so <clears throat> right before the pandemic, uh, my dad and I went together just as like a, mm -hmm. a guy's trip. I witnessed him eat three Dole Whips in one day. He's a champ. 
I aspire to be able to contain that much sugar in my body. Mm. Let me tell you, my dad. I is, had like three quarters of one and was like, I'm done. My dad is, my dad's like 5'9 and like 175 pounds, maybe. And I've Must never, nice. I've never seen somebody who could eat so much, like all the time. It's awesome. As I watch you eating my soul in that sandwich, it's fine. It's fine, guys. I'm sorry, it's fine. This, this is my dinner. I deliberately saved it to eat it on stream in front of Corey. I know, oh, man. Well, to be fair, but Corey, a lot happened in Destiny while I was gone. Yeah, I took a really bad week to go on vacation. You did. <laughs> You know, I actually did a lot of the in-game stuff that I had never done before, too. So I was very excited for that. I, we got a we got a massive trials refresh. We did, did some of that. Corey, did you do some dungeons? Did all three dungeons, Josh? All three dungeons. I'm so proud of you. Was that your first prophecy run? Yeah, yeah. So proud of you. Yeah, I. Uh, you did. We, you did. You did your first prophecy run. I tried. I tried so hard to play Crucible on my phone. Yeah, how'd that go? <laughs> Uh, it act so I want to be honest, it wouldn't have gone that bad. I was talking to Joe about it when I got home and the thumbsticks need to be raised up a little bit higher on the backbone, I think, to be mm -hmm. able to play an FPS, mm -hmm. especially cause like you get to click them down so much in destiny. Are they run. better than the switches thumbsticks for a handheld or are they about the same? I would say yes. I would say they're about on par. They're about on par. Um, uh, I think they, I think they have a little bit more maneuverability, which is pretty sad considering these are basically phone joy cons. Right. What really killed me was the triggers because my fingers were so cramped on top of each other back there. Right. The uh, L2 and R2 were so like small and I have fat. I don't know if you can tell by the everything about me, but I have fat fucking fingers and the amount of times I accidentally meleeed or threw a grenade when I was just trying to fire my gun or aim down sights was so bad. <laughs> I felt like sending a message to everybody on my team in quick play and being like, I'm so sorry. It was at that moment I knew I could not participate in trials over the weekend. So, I mean, you could have. Uh, Ner Nerd and Joe generously woke up very early, very early for me uh, on Tuesday. I, I was on about seven thirty in the morning, uh, and we played a lot of trials so that I could actually come talk about it. Yeah, I played some trials um, this weekend too. Oh man, I love trials. Tri tri trials all the way, baby. Our friends John and Max, friend of the show, A1 Johnny, and uh, Max both went flawless for the first time over the weekend. I'm hoping to add to it this weekend. Oh, come on, please give me a depth messenger. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm all in on trials, though. These, cha these changes are beautiful. Bring them to everything. Bring l Literally, Saint-14 is the best vendor in the entire game now. <laughs> I'm not even front. <laughs> Let me focus my Ingrams everywhere, damn it. <laughs> Let me spend these 30,000 legendary shards that I have. <laughs> um, uh. I, I was real happy because was like, I, I guess we'll just jump straight into it. Like with the trials changes, specifically with Saint, I love that the Ingrams that you get from him, even if they say they're like 1304, are actually useful because they actually, when you actually decrypt them, when you select what you want, Mm -hmm. Excuse me, I'm burping. Um, they will actually decrypt at 1320. Um, they'll decrypt at that pinnacle. As long as you've hit 1320, I believe, they will decrypt there, mm -hmm. uh, which is really, really nice. Uh, because I ignore those legendary engrams that come from Shaxx, Zavala, and Drifter. I don't pick up the ones that you get for every minor rank. I think it's stupid. They're, they're not worth it to me. Yeah, but with Saint, it's worth it because I didn't have to sit around and wait for Reed's regret to be in my uh, to be in my loot stream because you will get all six weapons throughout the season if you reset your rank with Saint. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, right now it's you get Eye of Soul and Igneous Hammer first, and those are in the spots where you would normally get the Ascendant shards and uh, the rocket launcher or ornaments. I believe that's how that goes. I love that idea. I think that's great. If you have hit the, if you've earned the adept weapon that is up for that week, you can actually dump all your resources into that. It'll cost you fifty thousand glimmer, I believe two hundred and fifty legendary shards. Obviously, your Ingram, and you have to have done the passage on. You have to have a passage on you. Mm -hmm. So it's going to cost you a lot, but I mean, for a lot of a lot of people who've gone flawless, like that's all you want. You want the adept versions of these guns, mm -hmm. um, or you want a chance at high stat armor dropping. I think the rewards, like, I played for about 
45 minutes and already had four or five Ingrams waiting for me back at Saints. I had gotten some drops. I had gotten a powerful, I, well, I'd gotten a pinnacle to drop. I got my second pinnacle to drop shortly after that. The only one I didn't get was win seven matches. I ended up with like five out of seven, I think, just doing it Tuesday morning. Mm-hmm. So I, and that's seven matches throughout the whole weekend. You don't have to do it all at once or all in one weekend. Like there are incentives now to not reset your card. This is right. what we've been begging for forever. It is the high is confirmed now as of today's twop. It is the most played trials weekend ever across either game. Mm-hmm. And that's including any trials, trials of the nine trials of Osiris, the new trials of Osiris. This is the most played version of it by a large margin too. Right. Well, I mean, like uh, when you uh, add matchmaking and like you eliminate kind of like that fear of like, if I don't win, I'm not going to get anything right. Like people are more willing to jump in. Right. And, but the, the, the card still has the flawless counter mm-hmm. on it. So like the hardcore can still go in and try to do flawless and get to the lighthouse or whatever. And it's still, it's like, it's benefiting everybody. I feel like. Right. And the two different passages that you have, you have access to mercy and you have access to, uh, I forget what the name of the other one is, but the other one is definitely geared more towards rewards. Yeah. It's like, I will probably play on that passage this coming week because yeah. I want more rewards. Yeah. Um, I got four or five reads regrets and an awesome eye of soul out of this weekend. Um, I got reads. I, I finally got a gun to roll with headstone on it. I've only been trying for three weeks. <laughs> finally got it. And of course it's the linear fusion rifle. Uh, not exactly what I wanted headstone on, <laughs> but that gun is awesome. I got it with triple tap, um, triple tap firing line. So when firing line gets fixed, um, I'm looking forward to being able to use that gun a lot more. But it hasn't left my inventory. I've been using it a lot. Um, Nerd and I were actually talking the other day that it's so wacky that our loadouts this week have been an exotic trace rifle in the primary slot, a fusion in the secondary, and a linear fusion for heavy. Like, what is life right now in this game? (laughs) This is, like, the greatest meta that we've ever seen. Obviously, I'm exaggerating because, I mean... Most of us are running sleeper stimulant in that heavy slot right now, right? Mm-hmm. Like we're all going to Shiro Chi, we're all farming the catalyst right now. Um I'm I'm still the divinity bitch, but it it feels great to have options finally. Like with these mods, null composure is actually worth using now. And with the right. changes to fusions this season. Like it was a gun that we all went LOL, I'm not using that last season. And now it's like uh okay, I guess we all need to go get a new one out of collections. Um, I think when you look at how Saint is structured with rewards, though, like to get back to Trials, how you can focus your Ingrams with him for armor, for weapons, it doesn't even have to be in your loot pool for you to be able to do it. Because like I said, I dumped all of mine, and we all know how it goes. In those early sub ranks, you're getting Ingrams all the time, right? Yeah. yeah. And... I think that being able to choose your rewards is so, it's so good. Like for those of us who have been playing and getting the pity bounties forever. And like we were struggling to turn in 20 tokens in a weekend, or, you know, we would just get enough to turn in 20 for the weekend and try and get another roll on a gun in our loot pool. Most of us have pretty like serviceable roles. I would say on most weapons now. Yeah. Um, and then there's been the challenge just the last couple seasons where, oh, when Igneous Hammer was introduced, you got one of those for doing your Trials Challenge. Last season, it was Shayura's Wrath. Uh, this season is surely going to be, they're going to give you a Reed's Regret. Um, how you can do that, though, like, I want to see that. I especially want to see that with Iron Banner, first and foremost. Yeah. Because there's so many things in that loot pool. Like, even if you just use the weapons from Arrivals until now, that is still such a great loot pool. Yeah. And that would encourage so many of us to keep going and playing. Like, let me earn re- let me earn rep with Saladin. We know that that's the next one they're working on, right? Right. Like, give me that for, give me, give me it for that. And then overhaul the gunsmith like that, too. Yeah. Like, I've been saying for a while on this show that I think that the gunsmith needs to be overhauled to be more in line with how Shax and Drifter were a couple seasons ago. Yeah. And I like that Zavala is like that this season. I think that those are all big wins. Give everybody Ingram focusing though. Let me spend my let me spend my resources, my shards, my glimmer. Like 
I want to do this because I think for those of us who we want to be raiding, we want to be doing high-end PvP, we want to be doing dungeons, like, this is stuff we want to do. Like, we want to target our loot. Like, I would love to be able to sit down with somebody like Ray who's just getting back in and say, all right, you need to focus all your Ingrams at, at the gunsmith on world drops, so you need to focus everything on first in, last out and get get auto-loading Vorpal. Like, you, you need to do that because that's still meta for boss damage. Right. Like, I'd love to be able to say something like that. Or... Um, Imagine you could do, and I mean, we've seen a level of this with the Umbral Ingrams, right? Imagine you could go there and instead of it just being the weapons for this season that you could get double perks on in row three, let me do some of the splicer weapons or some of the chosen weapons by using my currency from this season. Don't make me go earn the stupid currency from that season. This is the catch up season at the end of the year. Yeah. You know, let me do something like that. Um, you know, uh, what is it? Um, not Imperial, uh, Threaded Needle, I think, is the mm -hmm. uh, Linear Fusion from Chosen. Yeah, yeah. The, the Void Linear Fusion that we were all like, oh my god, I've gotten like 50 of these. And we were just deleting because they were such dog shit. <laughs> now I'm finding myself facing the possibility of needing to go back into Battlegrounds to farm these. Yeah, I, ha I, I have life. one somewhere. It's, but we, we look at something, and I think it's great that they tried it with Saint. Because you're going to get the hardcore players in there, right? We were all going to go in there and check it. Those of us who want to play all the time or who maybe even people who were timid about trials, they're going to look at those changes, especially matchmaking in the shorter round times now, which made a huge difference, by the way. Knocking 30 seconds off each round, it made it so much more fast-paced to me. Yeah. People weren't sitting around waiting on, on supers to charge. It gave time for some epic comebacks, some great plays. Joe and I were getting a lot of uh, two or three on ones. It, it feels more rewarding than it has in any of the games, I would say. Than original Trials, than Trials of the Nine, obviously, than this Trials that we had up until now. And I like, I, I can't believe we're saying this, like, Trials is, the Trials loot system is how everything should be going forward. Yeah. I agree 100%. I feel this, like, I like that I have mods that will drop extra weapons for me or mm -hmm. give me a better chance at getting, I can't tell you how many empty vessels and third axioms I deleted today doing Vanguard Strikes. Mm -hmm. It was a lot. I would love to be able to go to Zavala. If I see one more empty vessel, I'm just going to, I'm going to. I'm going to scream. Yeah. It's double Vanguard, so I'm playing a lot of strikes right now, which I already don't like doing. Yeah. Well, like, I would love to be able to go to Zavala and, oh, you did, you, you've unlocked the Adept Hung Jury before. And that's what's up this week in Grandmasters. You want to dump, like, 300 shards and, like, 50,000 Glimmer? I mean, basically make it equivalent to getting an Adept one from Saint. Mm -hmm. You want to dump that here to get a better roll on it? Introduce some of the Crucible weapons as adept versions. Introduce a new, I mean, obviously it would require them retooling Gambit entirely, but maybe in the future you have, you bring Gambit Prime back in some way and you have Gambit adept weapons as well. Like, there's just so many possibilities for loot now, and I think it all starts with looking at what is success. I have not seen a single person get upset with the new Trials loot system. Not no, a single person. I, I like it a lot. I think it's, I think it's great. Uh, I do have a question, though. Like, do you have, you have to... You have to win round, or do you, I guess I'm kind of confused because I played a lot of trials and I didn't get drops a lot. Did you go pick up your stuff from Saint? Yeah, you have to go straight to Saint to pick it up. Oh, you have to go to Saint to pick it up. Yes, okay. it, it works. It doesn't your loot, uh, as far as I know, like you have a chance for loot to still drop. Like I think Eye of Soul was the three win uh, drop this past weekend, so I had one of those right. drop in game. Well, I, only, I had one of my powerful. Game. I only played like probably 10 or 12 matches to be honest with you. Uh and I was just like I thought I thought the the stuff changed but then like now that you kind of explained it. Uh, it it does. So you have to go you have to go back to Saint. You'll have stuff waiting on the rewards track from him like you would Zavala or Shax. Mm -hmm. But up there in the corner, your top right corner where your progress bar is for whatever yeah. rank you're on. Yeah. You want to click on all those Ingrams. Like, those should be waiting for you this weekend. Okay. You should be able to get all those. Because okay. I was confused at first, too. I was like, I'm not getting drops. People are saying they got Trials Ingrams. They will come into your inventory when you click on them as Trials Ingrams, and mm -hmm. you just focus them at Shacks. 
Okay. Or at uh, Saint, excuse me. Saint, yeah. Okay. It's you might be able to do it now. I don't know if you can still access them by talking to him um, outside of a outside of trials being live. It doesn't look like um, it because I'm at him and it's just like uh, it just says trial trials uh, of Osiris is not active and then like it's just everything's blacked out or grayed out. Oh, okay. Yeah, you probably won't be able to pick it up until the weekend then. Well, that's fine. Um, what tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, tomorrow. Uh, when when this goes live, we'll be back in trials. Um, God, the ma- the matchmaking feels good. It feels rewarding. I mean, literally, fr- friends of ours are matchmaking their way to the lighthouse, which yeah. is just super encouraging to see. We saw a huge spike in the comp population when this happened back in Shadowkeep two years ago, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we saw a big jump. I mean, I I solo matchmaked my way to Recluse and uh, nearly to Mountaintop, mm-hmm. right? And it's like, if I can do it, just about anybody can do it at that point. Yeah. Like, if I'm not intimidated enough to go spend an afternoon in comp to earn Recluse, like the best weapon in the game at the time, then y'all shouldn't be either. And I feel that way with Trials now. Tri- we can literally, there's no way to make Trials more accessible than it is. Even if you suck, you will still get rewards. Mm-hmm. It may take you a little bit longer to get there, but you will still get rewards. Yeah. And, I mean, the Trials weapons are some of the best in the game. I mean... You look at I mean, how many prepared. people are how many people are still using Igneous Hammer like everywhere? Uh, I mean, Igneous Hammer has been great for two seasons now. Yeah, Igneous Shayura's Wrath is one of the best PvP weapons since Recluse got sunset. Mm-hmm. It's basically Trials Recluse. Mm-hmm. Like if you get the right, right roll on it, Reed's Regret. If you get Triple Tap Vorpal, that is one of the best DPS, and you combine it with some of the new mods in the artifact. That is one of the best DPS weapons in the entire game right now, and it's a legendary. Mm-hmm. Like, we cannot make it easier for you guys. Like, yeah. you, you've got that. You've got Eye of Soul is still in there, which, I mean, there's there's better kinetic sniper options, but Eye of Soul is still a really solid gun, I feel. I'm hoping that now with the focusing system, they'll put Astral Horizon back in. They'll put Summoner back in. Like, put some of these weapons that you'd kind of put on the back burner, Scholar, like, even – Bring those back in. Let me finish out my loot pool. Yeah. Bring the old Trials armor from last year back in. Like, if I want to drop 500 shards in a Trials Ingram to get that as an ornament, let me do it. Mm-hmm. I'm missing two pieces, and I'm still really upset about it. Question. But, yes. Reed's Regret. That's just that's yes. just available now, right? In the loot pool, right? It's just available. Okay. You, you do not have to unlock anything for it to be in your loot pool now. Okay. You can literally take a Trials Ingram to Saint, say, I want, if you have four Ingrams, you can get four Reed's Regrets in a row. That's okay. what I did. All right. I was I was just curious how that, because yep. like. The only thing you have to actually have unlocked is the, uh, the Adept version of a gun. Right. Okay. If you want the Adept one, you had to have earned it right. already. Right, 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 right. Which is how it should be. Right. No, I, would I agree. Want the same thing for nightfall weapons. No, I agree with you 100 percent on that. Yeah. I was just, I was just curious if like, because like I knew Reed's regret was like a big deal last weekend, um, and I just, I'm a trials uh, I mean, noob, it's, it's, guys. I'm trying to figure all this out. So, I mean, and that that's what it's about, right? Like, it, it's it's all about, it's all about learning it. It's about you know experimenting and like it's about getting people like you in that don't normally play trials getting Mm -hmm. you to engage with the game mode like if even you are coming out somebody who does not play a lot of pvp especially competitive pvp and is saying i like the changes to trials we have done the job correctly i feel Mm -hmm. like the feedback was given but no meme it took us a while to get there but they were listening Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we got there. It took us a few seasons. They warned us it was going to be a few seasons. This just makes me hope that they're seeing the feedback here. They're already implementing changes for tomorrow. There will be another fix that goes live tomorrow morning. Or when you're listening to this, the change should be live mm-hmm. Friday morning. Um, that I hope they fast track Iron Banner changes now. Yeah. I really need them to do that. I need them to overhaul the vendors. I'm not saying the vendors need to be overhauled for Shadow, for, for uh, blah, 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 Witch Queen. Mm-hmm. Maybe do that the season after. Like, having incremental changes every season is good. I know you have a lot on your plate, but maybe the PvP team can look at this or the Trials team can go, okay, Trials is in a really good place right now. Let's keep monitoring. Let's shift over and help with Iron Banner real fast. Let's get this implemented for Saladin. Because I don't know about you, but I'd love to spend the 3,000 goddamn tokens I have on something. <laughs> 
rather than spending them and getting like six cloaks in a row. Let me spend them and get a God World multi-match. Let me get, uh, I want to get, uh, I will literally dump them all into the sidearm. I swear to God, I will dump everything into that sidearm. I want it with headstone. I run stasis more than anything, even if PvP and PvE. Right. Please give me my, I have like 3,000 kills with this sidearm in two weeks. Please, for the love of God, give me one with headstone. <laughs> I have the headstone one. Uh, I have the roll with headstone. God, fuck you. It was the it was. Let's see. Hold on. I'll tell you what the roll is. The other perk isn't great. It's I have. Uh, let's see. I have range finder and headstone. I mean, I like range finder on sidearms personally. I, also, I use sidearms a lot. I also I got a, the Volpecula with headstone on it and tunnel vision. If I used if I used hand cannons, I'd be all over it. Um, th- I am slowly getting there. Maybe by the time Witch Queen comes out, I'll be a convert. Um, but on with tri- with trials notes, we actually have a question today. We have a question from our old friend Willow. Say, Willow, uh, I'd love to hear any trials. Hello, Willow. Yes, I'd like to hear any trials feedback from y'all and the upcoming changes to trials addressed in the Schwab today. You are in luck because we're going to go straight to the Schwab right now. The Twab. Right now. And this is literally all that is in the Twab this week is pretty much uh, they talk about uh, Aegir Scepter a little bit. There's a roadmap. We're going to come back to the roadmap. We're going to circle back. But Trials of Osiris. So the stats that we had, 750,000 players played Trials. 120,000 of those were first time ever players. Corey. Uh, I believe this is your first time in D2 Trials. Yes. Or at least in this incarnation of Trials. D, uh, I played Trials of the Nine when it first came out like for like two weekends, and I was like, I'm out. So and this another, is the first. Another 470,000. This was their first time they had played in a while. They hadn't played recently. Mm-hmm. I take that to mean it's been a couple of months. Yeah. So out of that, almost 600,000 are people who don't, regularly engage with trials mm-hmm. this is the healthiest the playlist has ever been crossplay is alive and well Two hundred thirty-seven thousand went flawless with one hundred and five thousand going flawless for the first time an average of 30 percent of the active player base played trials each day this weekend topping at 32 percent on saturday no day prior had ever gone above 21 percent 2.8 million hours of trials were played eclipsing the highest prior single week by a whopping six hundred thousand hours uh, it, in, insane, absolutely insane. Um, here are the changes that they are going to launch live when you're listening to this, unless you're watching us live tonight, in which case I love you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for but being these here. Are, these are changes that are going live on Friday, the 17th. We aren't satisfied with the matchmaking experience for players after seven wins. Thank you. I heard this a lot from our friends in our generalist. I heard it from Colonel Panic. Heard it from John, heard it from Max, heard it from a lot of people this weekend who managed to get the seven wins. It fucking sucks after seven wins because you get golf balls, you get prisms, things like that for winning at that rate, but it's so hard to do it. You're usually getting stomped 5-0 by Gilded Flawless teams, right? There is a flawless matchmaking pool that will go live Friday afternoon, which basically means... If you've gone flawless in a weekend, that's it. You're done. You're now in that pool, which I've already seen some early feedback. There's already some people upset about this, and I don't blame them. This makes it a lot harder to do flawless carries. This makes it harder for us to shepherd people to the White House. And I agree with that. I do think that that's going to present a unique challenge. But I think for the vast, overwhelming majority of us, this is going to be an extremely welcome change. Because let me tell you, nothing is worse than being on your second or third, trying to get your second or third win, and you get stopped by somebody who's already gone flawless that week, and they've got the glowing armor and everything. There is no worse feeling in this game than that. Yeah, Uh, It it can be discouraging even with the new loadouts. Like, I I wasn't as upset as I used to be in the past seeing that, but after you've been having that for 18 months, it's still discouraging to see it, even knowing that there's no new loot, new reward systems, etc. I'm glad they're addressing this right off the bat. Mm-hmm. This feels like it was a change that was really easy to do. Um, and, and I like this. So this temp, uh, we're also not happy with the experience of players who have a bad streak of getting repeatedly thrashed 5-0. So we are enabling matchmaking help if someone runs into several blowout matches. Thank you. On behalf of me, thank you. 
<laughs> this temporary help mechanic clears up once they start winning again, so don't think someone will cheese a flawless by tanking for a few games, then have a weekend of smooth sailing. And lastly, this this was my big one because I had the, uh, Joe and I had this happen to us a few times. Even on Tuesday morning, we had this happen a couple times. Um, we are enabling quitter penalties that we use in glory playlists, giving you a 30 minute timeout if you quit out of too many games. We're going to be watching this and have harsher plans if players continue to abandon their fire teams. Good. I cannot tell. We had several third third uh, people drop. And, I mean, even one of the teams we were playing against had a guy who quit out when he realized we were up, like, four to two. Mm-hmm. He quit out. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's pretty shitty. You, If you're going into an endgame mode like this, there needs to be a penalty. Like, if you if it's a network connection, and I, I really hope they have something that, oh, if, you're, if your internet, like, my internet likes to give out when I'm streaming Destiny, for example. Only when I'm streaming. Or when I'm trying to do something on, like, day one, when I'm trying to do, like, a weekend one raid, my internet likes to drop like crazy. Mm-hmm. Destiny's the only game it does it in, but it likes to do that. I hope there's something on the back end that says, oh, this was due to a network error and not because the person just flat out quit out of the game. Right. Or went to orbit. Like, I hope there is something there. Like, oh, they had a hard crash. They had contacting servers. Something like that. Like, I hope there is something to distinguish. On that, because I've been punished in Gambit, for example, on that. That's why I'm really, really playing Gambit like the first week or two of a season or an expansion, mm-hmm. because I know I'm going to get kicked at some point, and I don't want to get those penalties. Um, next weekend, though. So next week, they're already planning another fix for the 24th. First ever Trials Labs Capture Zone Trials. I'm very excited to see how that works. <laughs> we will be disabling special ammo replenishment on Revive. You'll still get special ammo if you kill somebody or when you start the next round. So no more um, if you get revived, you won't have two rounds in the shotgun chamber. Mm-hmm. I think this makes you this can make you play a lot smarter. Like you have to think about your loadouts a little bit more, I think, with this. We yeah. are also disabling, and I love this right here. We are disabling the matchmaking counter on the trials lobby, so you won't be able to tell how many players have joined, but we'll still be told when they join. We've also fixed an issue preventing you. We we will also fix an issue preventing you from being able to master work weapons from Saint 14's rank rewards. I love this. The concern with matchmaking was, oh well, if you're a three stack and you see, you know, like people loading in, it was like, oh, I'm just going to jump straight in there. Or if you were a solo and you saw like all of a sudden three people join, it was like, oh shit, I got to back out. I got to back out. Got to back out. Got to back out. Yeah. I don't want to fight a three stack. Or three stacks looking for players that aren't playing together. Right. That are already like, you know, double gilded flawless or whatever. Right. Like right, 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 that's right. not fun for any of us. Like go go off in your own loot pool. Like holy shit, just go. Yeah. Um I like all of it. These are all good changes. Great changes. I, think, I do wonder how much we're gonna have to walk back the we're gonna put you into a separate pool once you've hit flawless for the weekend. I do wonder if that's going to have to be walked back at some point. Yeah. Uh, because I do think that that's a good point being made, but I think that's such a small percentage of the player base that I don't know if that's really going to affect Bungie too much. Yeah. I think right now they're going to be like, all right, let's like, they've always told us like, let's see how these changes feel after a couple weeks. And then we can revisit it. If we need to, like we have six months here to work on this before the witch queen comes out. Like that's why they're doing trials labs. You know, we're bringing crystal labs back for trials. That's why we're working on things here. I hope that we eventually see that with Iron Banner. Mm-hmm. I've mentioned before, like I want to see, I want to see Rift. I want Mayhem. I want Supremacy. I don't want Showdown. Like I, I want Supremacy. Supremacy would be cool. Like these are all modes that we had Iron Banner with in Destiny One. I want Momentum Control Iron Banner. Like I want SWAT Iron Banner. God, SWAT Iron Mayhem. Banner would be like, awesome. There are so many things you can do here. I'm so tired of control after four years. Four years of control is four years too many. Um, I was over I just, it when Shadow started. I'm just apathetic now. I just do it because I'm a glutton for punishment. I just I feel like as much as I like control, don't get me wrong. I think control is a great mode for it is. Destiny specifically. But like, I feel like if you're one of your top tier competitive modes, if you're really serious about making Iron Banner a competitive mode, a real competitive mode, not just saying mm-hmm. it's a competitive mode, which is what it feels like sometimes, like 
you right. got it. You got to do a different game mode. You got to make it feel more competitive, right? Like you just have like, control doesn't feel competitive. You know, it just doesn't. I'm sorry, at least to me, like it just doesn't feel like a competitive mode for a PvP. You know, so I I don't know. That's just me. Am I wrong here? I don't know. Um, no. I mean, I really like. Uh, I really like Iron Banner Control. I think the whole locking out on zones, I think that's great. I love it. I wish it did it in regular control occasionally, but I understand you need something better or more unique in Iron Banner. And I, I don't know how you update those other modes to work in Iron Banner either, right? But I think there's a lot of opportunity there, like just to experiment with something. Like if it doesn't land, okay, have control waiting in the wings. You can just enable it for the rest of the season. Um, and you can go back to the drawing board with it, but I think Iron Banner needs a lot of love. It got a, it got some great stuff in the form of its freelance playlist, and I mean, we were all saying after that, like, hey, it works here. Go, that's easily the best experience in Iron Banner if you don't have a stack to run with. Uh, give us that in Trials, and they're doing it now. And I, I'm, I'm in the player pool now that is saying, all right, that's it. Give me matchmaking for everything now. Let's do it. Give me matchmaking for for just about everything, because if we can succeed and get people flawless in the lighthouse matchmaking with random people, if we can get them through the glory playlist, if we can get them into Iron Banner having a good time, there's no reason we can't have it for uh, Master Nightfalls, for Grandmasters, I would say for Grandmasters and for Dungeons. I still think raids may be the one tricky one. Yeah, I still think I see no reason why you can't do it. I mean, I feel like I feel like it's harder for raids just because like it does require so much communicate like it requires so much communication. I mean, dungeons mm-hmm. requires communication, but usually it's the same mechanic through the entire dungeon, right? Because I mean, mm-hmm. I uh, like I said at the top of the show, I did prophecy for the first time in the last couple of weeks, and I ran it like three or four times, and it's great. But that mechanic where you dunk the moats is it's the mechanic for the the dungeon, right? Like you do, you just keep doing right. it. And like, it, yeah, there's an evolution of it throughout the dungeon, but it's still the same thing. Whereas raid, like every encounter has a different, you know, maybe there's like an evolution of it when you get to the final uh, room, but like each encounter is usually different. not. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think there's, uh, there's a lot of room for improvement. Right. And I like that again, like I just keep coming back to this. I can't believe that we're holding up trials as the example of what Endgame and Destiny should be like in terms of rewards and everything. I mean, we saw it with the raids, with but the I spoil mean, system. in a way, in a way, you should look at trials because it's like the premier PvP mode. It's the it's it's been their premier mode since D one, right? Like it's like right. It, it's just it's largely been a joke for the yeah. last five years. Yeah, no, and I trials agree with of the you. nine. Let's let's not pretend that trials of the nine was anything particularly special. And then Trials of Osiris, I mean, like, some of us tried to will it into existence, but, I mean, it wasn't until you started giving us the pity bounty that we would even be like, all right, I guess I'm going to go suffer through it now. Like, I love that people can go in and, like, oh, I haven't unlocked all the armor? Cool. Like, I'm going to use my unlo- I'm gonna use some of my early unlocks to just get that armor in my loot pool and go transmog a few pieces. Like, yeah. that's awesome. Like, I sat here and, you know beat my head against the wall to get the helmet and the chest piece, mm-hmm. you know, in separate weeks. But I'm glad that everyone can have that chance now. Again, like, let me, let me earn that D1 trials armor again, baby. Bring it back. We have Ingram focusing now. Yeah. Uh, I imagine there's a limit to how much you can put into those Ingrams too. Um, which is why, like, I think if you have a whole set of armor and you have like eight weapons, for example, I think that's a great pool. You can let people pull from especially in a mode like Iron Banner where there's just there's several good weapons in Iron Banner. There's great weapons in all the playlists now, I would argue. Yeah. Um like why wouldn't you want to do that? I mean, like I know people are still running bottom dollar from from Gambit. Like let, let them curate it for bottom. like I probably wouldn't give a shit in Gambit right now with the current loot pool in terms of ah, I'm going to go focus Gambit Ingrams, but I mean People, you know, they like survivor, you like survivor's epitaph over in uh, over in the Crucible. You know, you like you like that. You like uh, I like Third Axiom a lot mm-hmm. in, in the Vanguard. I would love to be able to go say, oh, uh, adept. I don't know. Plug one is up this week. If you've earned it before, you can go get it from those Vanguard Ingrams. I would play so many strikes 
to get guaranteed shots at a god roll of that mm-hmm. to just earn Vanguard Ingrams and be able to do it. I, I would play so many strikes then. Yeah. Because you're still getting the chance in the playlist activity, which I think is key. And like they didn't take that away in trials either. Like you're still there's still rewards for three, five, seven, and flawless. You just don't have a pity bounty to get you that three win thing anymore. It's never been easier to get three wins because it's just three wins in a weekend. It's not in a row anymore. Yeah. It is such a good feeling though. Like I'm I'm just I'm gonna keep gushing about it because this is what trials needed from the beginning. It, it may have taken this a lot longer than we wanted to get there. Like I would have preferred that this rat, this realization would have happened like at the end of last summer. Yeah. And we could have had this implemented maybe by spring. Like the time that we were finding out that these changes were coming back in February with the state of the game is honestly probably when these should have been getting enacted. Let's be totally frank. Yeah. But this, this is continuing on a path of updating this game in a way that a lot of us have been calling for, for a very long time. We finally have PVE where we want it. Like, the story is consistently great. The rewards are great. We've got new weapons every season and every playlist activity. And Nightfalls, like, that's how you're bringing back D1 weapons now. Uh, The Iron Banner loot pool is getting better and better. I I would say, you know, Crucible weapons are getting, Crucible weapons are dropping good. Gambit weapons are dropping good. We finally have fixed Trials. Like, Raids. God, I love the raid chest at the end where you it rewards people who want to raid all the time, who want to go get those spoils every week. It rewards you for doing multiple runs on one character. Yeah. Like, it, it's great. Like, it, it's great for me. Like, I don't feel the need to run it on another character now unless we're all trying to go for certain triumphs for a seal or something. Because <laughs> or now I can stock... Or Vex. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, feel, it feels really good not to worry about Vex or Eyes anymore. Um to be able to go in and help get people through, but like as a Sherpa, I'm still getting I'm still getting spoils. I'm still getting those rewards. And I can go buy whatever I want if I'm chasing a specific role. Like it, it's become a joke in our raid group, but I still don't have, after 22 clears, still have never gotten commemoration to drop from Tanex at the end of Deepstone. Mm-hmm. Still do not have the LMG. Still don't have it. I got eyes before I got the legendary LMG from the final encounter. Yeah. Well, you know. I still don't have the cloak or uh, Prey Death's Revenge from Vault. I've cleared that about 15 times now. Like, yeah. I I would love to get those. <laughs> I really, once I get a good Prey Death's, I'm probably done with Vault. And that's not even that's not even like a meme. Like the time lost versions, like I like that they're there. They don't really do anything for me though. You know? What do they but actually like, what do the time lost versions actually do? Are they like the They're raid basically a, adept? They're the adept version. Okay. Yeah, they're adept versions. It's just their it's just their name for them. Yeah. And like I like that. I think that's cool. I you know, there's certain mods that can uh excuse me, mods don't I don't believe mods drop from Master Vogue. Like they still only drop from the flawless chest or from GM Nightfalls. I just I look at this and I go, man, the loot. I think loot rewards are overall in such a good place right now. There are obviously some changes that need to be made with the Umbral model, uh, particularly the tier three focusing this season. It was bugged. I was really happy about that. I know Paul Tassi was really happy about it, and then they fixed it. There was no need to fix it. What the hell else am I going to spend all this? currency on right i have every upgrade except for the last two things on the fucking compass and that's because those are time gated right like come on man let me let let me enjoy some of these double perk weapons you know give me double perks in columns three and four instead of just in four like give me those extra perks man if i want to blow 600 fractal line on each one let me do it I, i don't understand it like The currency is so readily available. Please let me spend it on something. I'm begging you. I spent like 2,400 this afternoon and I had it back like within an hour and a half. Yeah. So I did so many strikes, but I don't know. Like I, I guess like just to kind of like, I know we keep getting off track, but to wrap up trials thoughts, like it's in a great place. I look forward to getting to spend the whole weekend with it this coming weekend. I plan on playing a lot of it Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Um, for once, playing on Monday or Tuesday did not just result in there only being flawless sweats on. Yeah. Um, it was actually kind of 
nice playing in the morning on Tuesday. Um, that being said, I'll probably be trying to get most of mine in on Friday afternoon. That seems to still be the most chill time. Um, Friday afternoon or like, you know, like Sunday afternoons when people are watching football seem to be like kind of the two good times right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I look, I look forward to getting some Shayura's Rats this weekend. Like I have a couple reads regrets I'm happy with. I'd still like Triple Tap Vorpal, but I really want a good Shayura. So I still haven't gotten a really good roll on that yet. Um, it's great. It's great. If you're, if you want to add, I do think that you're going to have to add more than one new weapon to the trials pool each season though, or you're going to have to rotate the older weapons back in Mm -hmm. just to dilute that a little bit, because I am going to get to a point with trials rewards where I'm like, well, I have the God rolls on stuff because I've been banging my dick against the wall for so long in this game mode that I inevitably got some decent rolls on some of these guns. Like, I just don't care anymore. Like, if I go flawless, cool. Like, if that ever happens, awesome. If that happens, I'm spending every single bit of glimmer I have that weekend to buy every single adept gun I possibly can. I'm buying, like, six rolls, even if I get a god roll on my first one, just to say, I did it. I was able to do it. Yeah. Corey, any closing thoughts on the Trials revamp? Trials rework? No, I think it's great. I like it. I'm going to play some. He likes it. That's right. You heard it, people. You heard it here first. He likes it. It's good. Um, Quote that. Box quote. Box quote right there. It works. <laughs> That's the Todd Howard quote, isn't it? It just works. Yeah, I think so. Isn't that the meme? Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> um, there's really nothing else in the TWAB this week. Uh, we've got some hot fix stuff, which we're going to we're going to run over very quickly. There's a couple highlights there um, that I want to talk about. There's a couple stats given at the bottom. There's two lifetime stats and there's two year long stats. Total guardians that have played destiny 187 million. And 9.8 billion hours played in game. Wow. That is wild. That's wild. In seven years, that's what we've gotten. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's a absolutely, lot of, that blows my mind. It's a lot of hours. That is a lot of hours. And then in the last year, uh, 2 million Atheon defeats in the Vault of Glass and 3.5 million Tanix eliminations in Deepstone Crypt. Um. I, and I think that's just because, I mean, Deepstone has been out so much longer than Vault by about seven months, mm-hmm. six, six and a half, seven months, somewhere in there. Vault's only been out since end of May. Like, that's kind of wild. I think that shows that, like, if you make a raid free to play, it's going to inevitably get more interaction than if you have to own an expansion or have it on Game Pass. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still like the idea of, like, I mean, you have to keep something behind the paywall, right? Yeah. So uh, I'm glad that both raids aren't like if it's a reprised raid, it shouldn't be behind there. But yeah. if it's brand new, it should absolutely be behind it. Yeah, that's that was my thought I was on that. Um, let's hot fix. Um, hot fix. They have they have fixed the issues regarding. Uh, I'm just going to go over a couple real quickly. Uh, Worm God crests and Radiant Dance Machines have been resolved, and they have been re-enabled in all activities. Um, increase the effect of both the impact and detonation of explosive light on rocket launchers to increase damage by 25%. Fix an issue where danger zone was not functioning properly on rocket launchers. Um, uh, there is a preemptive fix apparently, because we kind of know what the, uh, catalyst for Agar Scepter does starting when you can unlock it next week, which is if you have a full super, you can actually drain your super, to get extra firepower on the Scepter. <laughs> uh, fixed an issue with Anchor Scepter where a player's super wouldn't drain while in empowered mode. Wow. Uh, fixed an issue where a Gilding Triumph could be completed before the base title seal was claimed. And fixed an issue where the Wyvern Precision Kill objective was not progressing as intended for the Dead Eye seal. As soon as I saw they fixed that, I had it, no joke, about 10 minutes later. I had so many precision kills on wyverns over the last couple of weeks, and I was trying to figure out why it wouldn't work. I had completely missed that that seal was bugged, and I was just going nuts. <laughs> uh, so that that's kind of cool. The strike streak uh, is fixed finally. Um, if Where strike streaks were not rewarded after completing a strike, if the player joined a strike in progress or if the player was pulled forward. Um 
Players should once again not be able to reset their reputation if they have not picked up all rank reward items. A quality of life improvement for rank resetting is coming later this season. I'm interested to, interested to see what that means. I think that means like maybe you don't have to pick everything up to reset. Um, I know like I run out of room for golf balls and for uh, enhancement prisms. So kind of interested to see what they do on that one. And then there's a few uh, specific uh, changes to a few strikes that were holding people up. Um, yeah, I think that's that's probably about it. Uh, increased target score, increased score target for Iron Banner control from 125 to 150 matching base control. And adjusted the mercy thresholds in Iron Banner to reduce the number of games that end shortly before they reach the score target. So I'm okay. I'm okay with all this. Like these are these are changes that need to happen. That was half except deployed to today. Of course, we've got the trials fix going live Friday morning, and then another one next Friday as well. Um, I like that we're preemptively fixing things though. Yeah, we're not waiting for the player base to scream about it. It's like nope we we noticed it from playing it on the first day. Something needed to change. Thank God. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, there, there is a topic this week though that Ooh. is not exactly uh, the greatest of topics, but it is still Destiny adjacent. So we're going to talk about it. no, nobody is being a sex pest this time. Nobody is being a predator in the community that well that we're aware of this week. Um, not yet. But oh god, hopefully never. Uh, <laughs> this morning. Eurogamer posted an article, and uh, I mean, a lot of other people posted it too, but Eurogamer's where I saw it first, uh, where Marty O'Donnell was found in contempt of court over his use of Destiny assets and owes Bungie $100,000 in legal fees. <laughs> uh, in April of this year, I'm, I'm going to read, I'm reading directly from Eurogamer. In April of this year, Bungie served uh, the celebrated composer behind the original Halo music with contempt of court papers over videos related to Destiny that were uploaded to O'Donnell's YouTube channel and other platforms. Some of these videos were early musical sketches of what became Music of the Spheres, the much-loved musical foundation for uh, 2014's original Destiny. Uh, contempt of court claim relates to the terms of a prior lawsuit between Bungie and Marty O'Donnell over his acrimonious exit from the company, a lawsuit that O'Donnell eventually won. Bungie says that uh, O'Donnell, who was their veteran audio director until he was fired in 2014, was ordered to return all material related to Music of the Spheres and Destiny and was blocked from sharing or performing it as part of a 2015 injunction. Bungie said all materials includes not just Music of the Spheres in their final state, but all versions, components, and variations of the tracks. That is, all material involved in any way in the creation of the Music of the Spheres and Destiny. Well, in 2019, to summarize, Marty O'Donnell started posting all this to YouTube and to Bandcamp. Uh, which is not great. Um, <laughs> Superior Court of Washington, King County ruled in Bungie's favor um, in, uh, it, back in July. Um, the company is unable to comment on ongoing litigation, but pointed to the court's ruling above. O'Donnell has declined to comment when contacted by Eurogamer. The court has now imposed upon Mr. O'Donnell a number of sanctions, including a third-party forensic examination of his electronic devices in order to delete any assets relating to Destiny or Music of the Spheres. O O'Donnell must also remove all relevant material from the internet. He's already done this, if you were wondering where all that went from his YouTube channel. Which, it's funny, because I was talking about a friend with us a few yeah. months ago. He must also write to any third party he is aware of who also posted the material to ask him to remove it. He's also ordered to post a message, the wording of which the parties agreed to, on his Twitter, YouTube, Bandcamp, and SoundCloud sites slash channels, stating he did not have legal authority to uh, provide material related to Music of the Spheres or Destiny and asking anyone who previously downloaded any such assets to delete them and refrain from sharing and will destroy any copies of them. Uh, and <laughs> God, there is just so much here. Uh, you will refrain from making any direct or indirect public comment regarding these posts, including responses to those inquiring regarding basis for such posts, and will let the message speak for itself. So far, he has not done this. Uh, must pay Bungie all money of any kind he, retain, he received from the sale of related materials uploaded to Bandcamp, and is ordered to pay reasonable costs associated with contempt proceeding, including attorney's fees and fees associated with third-party examination. These fees are in dispute with O'Donnell's representatives arguing the near 100,000 Bungie's called for is unreasonable. Um, 
And it's just there. There's so much. Like he deleted his Twitter account uh, earlier in the year. Uh, it was restored, and in a now deleted tweet, he says, "I'm thinking about retiring from the games industry for good." And then in another delete tweet, he that he may be forced to shut down his YouTube. When asked why, O'Donnell replied, "Ask Pete Parsons." That was also later deleted. <laughs> uh, and then on the fourth of June, O'Donnell tweeted, "Ask his followers to consider buying the soundtrack to Golem, the 2019 PSVR game he worked on in his new studio, Highwire. The money will help with my huge legal bills. Thank you." That tweet does still remain online. Highwire Games is currently working on the controversial Iraq War Games Six Days in Fallujah. That's how the article ends. <laughs> so, if you're wondering what Marty O'Donnell is up to right now, he's making a game about war crimes, basically. I don't know if that's the right way to phrase it, but that game is, it, like, I remember when it first got announced, it's a huge problem, we're not going to talk about the game, but I find it very bizarre that we've gotten to this place with the firing of Marty O'Donnell, that we are still having to relitigate this like six or seven years later from when he was fired. Because, I mean, he, he got fired in 2015, I believe. And the last contributions he had, I think, were on the Taken King. Yeah. If they were even on that. It may have just been like in House of, House of Wolves. It may have actually been the last thing he worked on, now that I think about it. But I was talking about this with Joe earlier. It's wild how much better the music got after Marty left. Yeah, it's definitely uh, taking a turn. I'm gonna be honest with you. And it's taking a turn, I mean, uh, don't get me wrong. Like the it, the music in Halo is like top tier music. Don't get me wrong. But is, like, no, no, I, I'm not. I'm not using any of this. No, to Marty no, back no, 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 no. I know, I know. Yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But like the music in Destiny never hit the same way that Halo did until. I would say... I think... See, I, I'm not in a weird place on this, because there are tracks that I think of in Destiny 1, like the original the original menu music, the tower mm-hmm. music. Right. Um, I think of those, but I don't think any of those were quite on the level of, the, like, the Halo theme. I still don't think anything is on the level of the Halo theme. Yeah. Like, that is just simply one of the most iconic pop culture I mean, when you when you start hearing that choir, years. when you start hearing that choir in Halo, you just, like... Oh, dude, when you hear the Gregorian chant, like, it's all over. Like, I'm hyped up. I'm ready to go save the planet. I'm ready to kill some flood. Like, there's just, there's no better mode, right? <clears throat> and I've argued over the years, like, there are a few Destiny tracks that get me really hyped that are really good. And I think a lot of that's come from Michael Salvatore, who mm-hmm. has who worked with Marty for years and years on Halo. Um, really, he was his, his musical partner from the very beginning. Right. He just didn't have the name recognition until now. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's really like, I bring this up to say that I think it's really unfortunate that there are still issues pertaining to the old guard being let go at Bungie. Cause we know Marty O'Donnell was unceremoniously let go. And I mean, thank God his exit wasn't as bad as this and like has not been public like this. Joe Statton Mm -hmm. who went back to Microsoft to go advise on first party stories and storylines and games. And now Halo. Uh, And is, yeah. And is now basically saving Halo infinite Uh, has definitely reassured uh, the majority of us who have appeared on this show (laughs) knowing that it's back, but it's, it's a shame that we have to keep relitigating this over and over and over from already. Um, I do hope that this means that Bungie will eventually release uh, Music of the Spheres in its entirety. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I'll tell you something, like, I listen to them on YouTube. I th- it, it's, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, I think it's some of Marty's best work overall. And it's very clear to see where the inspiration for Destiny came from. I really, really, really would like an official release of this. Like, if you're going to block the man from releasing it, Bungie, I- I'm pleading with you, please do the right thing and release it. Yeah, because, man, there are. I think that I think there's a line like when this was something that was created like for you, like it's not music isn't like a storyline. Like You can you can toss a storyline out. We know that like Joe Statton's entire storyline was basically scrapped and now bits and pieces of it have definitely been brought back over the last couple of years. Right. Uh, including the whole crow storyline, which is hilarious to me. Yeah. Um, it only took us like six or seven years to circle back to the original storyline. Yeah, but how how long did that take to what? So, oh. I think breaking free from Activision was really like. Oh yeah. The no, yeah, so no, I get that. 
I'm just saying, like, the, the whole crow storyline, was it always supposed to be, like, Aldrin turning into the crow? Was it always supposed to be that? No. No. It, it, yeah, Aldrin I didn't did think not, so. From my knowledge, Aldrin did not exist in the original draft of the game. Crow was supposed to basically be Cade. Yeah. They only made Cade comedic for the Taken King because they were like, well, we have Nathan Fillion. We might as well use him. Right. Yeah. Okay. I just... Because I, I, mm-hmm. I knew the crow existed... I knew he was supposed to be like a major player, but I didn't know if like the story we're getting now was somehow shoehorned into that original draft, right? Where Aldrin died and became the crow or whatever. No, that was something that was definitely brought up afterwards. But I mean, we know that uh, Brendan O'Neill had recorded dialogue as, as the crow and everything. Mm -hmm. And he he voices crow now crow and Aldrin, right? He had recorded dialogue way back when, Mm Mm-hmm. For the crow, I mean, we we heard him speak in the original trailer in the 2013 trailer, for God's sake. Right. Um, I just, man, I really hope that things like I, I things will never be patched up between these guys. Unfortunately, like any 30th anniversary celebration, Bungie's going to do this year is going to be done without Marty. Mm-hmm. Which I would argue, like when you think of Halo, I mean, like you, there's two things you think of: you think of the Master Chief, and you think of that, you think of the theme. Mm-hmm. Like, so much of Halo's identity, I think, is found in the music. I mean, in the early stages of, Des- of Destiny 2, like, I remember sitting there going, like, well, the story kind of sucks, but at least the gunplay and the music are cool. Yeah. And that's what really mattered to me was, like, well, at least Marty's still at the top of his game. Like, this may not be as iconic as Halo, but maybe in a few years I'll think of it this way. Yeah. And I still think there's some great tracks in that. And, you know, Into the Taken King and Rise of Iron and all, all that. And then when Salvatore fully takes over, I think is really when it goes up a step. Oh, yeah. And it's just, it's a shame because you know that they're going to do stuff this year. You know, we, we saw Jason Jones in public for the first time in how many years right. during the, uh, the Witch Queen reveal event, you know, well, talking about where he thinks gaming is going next. Public. <laughs> public, yeah. But I, it's like our first I mean, time it's, that we've heard him speak since that Destiny Ryan McCaffrey. first talking about it, Ryan McCaffrey. Yeah. He, the guy doesn't do interviews. He's basically a recluse. And I really wish that we could get, you know, him, Marty O'Donnell, uh, Jimmy Geismer, you know, a few of these others who like really worked on that Halo trilogy and were huge parts of it. I really wish we could get them talking like maybe with Luke Smith, who was covering it as a journalist during yeah. Halo 1 and 2 yeah. for EGM. I really wish we could get them like to sit down for a, like a retrospect on the journey from Oni to Halo, like from Oni to like Halo 3. Or something, you know, like what was that nine, eight or nine year stretch like? Right. You know, like how do you go from doing a game for that Rockstar published, right, to being owned well, by Microsoft? To be fair, Rockstar wasn't an RTS to an FPS. Like, to be fair, Rockstar wasn't the Rockstar that they are now, though. At that time, no, no, they, they wouldn't attain that for another year. Yeah, they they would become that with Grand Theft Auto Three, and then Vice City is what kind of cemented that, right? Are you sure it wasn't State of Emergency that cemented that? Uh, no, I think it was Manhunt <laughs> and uh, some of those other choice games. But it's it's just it's it's really a big bummer that we're probably never going to see these guys who were you know like Joe Staten even who was the cinematics director. Like we're probably like you might see him talk with them. But you're almost certainly never going to see Marty talk ever again with these guys. And that's, like, as a fan, selfishly, that really bums me out. But, like, this is a guy who's been in the industry for how, in the music and in the, you know, entertainment industry for how long. Like, he definitely knew what they told him not to do, and he still did it. And that's what, it's kind of hard to have sympathy, I think. Why? So as callous as that seems, it's why, hard for me to have sympathy. Why did he get fired? I don't really remember why he got fired. I don't. I mean, I would have to go and. Uh, I mean, if you that, if we don't I have that information, it's not a big deal. I was just curious because, like, I never really because I remember he got fired, but I don't even really remember why he got fired. So, um, he said he was terminated without cause on April eleventh, twenty fourteen. Um, that's just wild um i don't know that we ever truly got the actual explanation behind it like i'm reading i'm reading a Eurogame article from 2016 and i don't think that we 
ever really got that. Um, but he implied that it was due to Bungie leadership. And I, I feel like it was, it probably came from up top, but also that I think Activision probably had a hand in this. Mm -hmm. That was back when they were like, no, you need to scrap the entire story and things like that. Um, which is just absolutely wild. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I tried to look but it up, and we, now we it's just now it's just in... talking about the lawsuit now. So, I don't... do what? I try. I I looked at, trying to look it up, but it just keeps bringing up the lawsuit that he's going through now. So, um, I know that the 2013 debut of Destiny at E3 at Sony C3 was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back for Marty because none of that was his music mm -hmm. uh, that was used there. That was all Activision. Um. And I like, I, I, so I want to read exactly what he says here. We had a tact agreement with the fans that when we show the fans something, we're showing them Bungie's work. There are some trailers we agree will be outsourced. The plan was not to have the official E3 trailer be outsourced or worked on without us being super intimately involved, which would have meant at a minimum for me, our actors, our writing, our music, our sound design, and our mix. Certainly we have no problem partnering with outside creative groups to assist us, but that wasn't what Activision wanted to do on the trailer. They felt they had the business and contractual right to make those decisions. At that point, I felt we were pretty unified, Marty says. I thought we had to make it abundantly clear to our fans this particular piece was made by Activision and not by us. I didn't know how to say that in a way that probably would have been anything other than messy, but I didn't think it was my job to figure out a way to sell that. I just thought it was the right thing to be truthful with the fans. I thought this trailer, this Activision trailer can go up all over the internet, that's fine, but it doesn't mean to be on the front page of Bungie.net. That was the beginning of the end. Um, and I mean, he, he did tweet out on June 11th, 2013, to be clear, the official Destiny E3 gameplay trailer was not made by Bungie. It was made by the company that brought you Call of Duty. Um, that is just great. I mean, this is a super long article. Yeah. Um, it, it's so it very, seems like his, his, him being upset with, with, uh, Activision. I think it started being, out with him being it. upset with Activision and it just like kind of grew. Yeah. Um, well, it probably went like he was upset at Activision, he got kind of mouthy. Activision went to Bungie and said, "Hey, you got to control this." And then him and the higher up started, you know that. That's well, I mean, kinda... he, he was on Bungie's board at the time. Yeah. Um, because here he says, uh, the, "It says the tweet may not have much, made much of an impact on social media, but shook the foundations of Bungie." Court documents reveal Bungie's top brass for Roy O'Donnell had hurt the Bungie team, hurt the game, drove a negative online discussion, and violated Harold Ryan, Harold Ryan's then president of Bungie's instructions. Activision advised Bungie O'Donnell's conduct may constitute a breach of the party's contract. There is also a suspicion that O'Donnell is more focused on publishing music of the spheres than taking the best interests of Bungie into consideration. The other board members were not happy. Activision wasn't happy. My friends at Bungie were like, well, of course Marty was going to do that. Was that a surprise to anybody? I just thought it was a small thing to do to say, hey, this wasn't something we were happy about, and that's what happened. Um, tensions were running high uh, leading up to uh, the 2013 reveal. And it just it, there's there's just so much here, um, and it basically all exploded the week before E3, uh, which is crazy. I mean, I, again, this is several pages long. Uh, I encourage y'all to go read it. Um, I, I read this probably four or five years ago for the first time, but it is uh, it's kind of crazy. I mean, it seems like in this he wanted to really move on, but kind of it kind of came back and to, to kind of wrap up my thoughts like. It feels like he kind of brought this last part that we heard about today on himself. Like this is squarely on Marty. He knew what he was not allowed to do mm -hmm. legally. Yeah. And he did it anyways. Like I, I cannot imagine there would have been a problem with him going to Bungie and saying, Hey, I know that I've burned some bridges, but you know, the Activision deal is gone now. Like I would like to partner with you guys on an official release of music of the spheres. I consider that to be, you know, one of my, one of the pinnacles of my work. Um, I would like to work with you guys on an official release. You guys can do it through the Bungie store. Maybe we can give everything to, maybe we can give all the money to charity. I don't think Bungie would have said no to that. Mm -hmm. I think it's the way he went about doing it that yeah. ultimately has driven the problem. And I, I hate saying that about a guy that I, I mean, I do greatly admire, admire Marty O'Donnell's work. Mm -hmm. um, not just in music, but like in sound. Like I think he has helped create definitively the backbone of what destiny would become in terms of audio and sound. 
and really helped shape the feel of that early Destiny 1 universe. But, I mean, Halo is not Halo without Marty. Right. And I don't think without his contributions, we would necessarily say that Destiny's audio is what it is now without him laying that foundation, at least. And obviously, with Michael Salvatore being there to carry on his legacy and carry on what his partner used to do. Right. So I, I don't it, It's so weird. It's so messy. I mean, we had the whole fucking Paul McCartney song. God. Uh, Music video on is, the moon. Hope, hope for the future. <laughs> It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. I swear to God. It's the weirdest thing for a video game I've ever seen. Remember the music like, video we on the moon? We were more worried about that than we were about the storyline of D1. Let that sink in. I mean, yeah. It sounds like a move to sell a game instead of actually working on the game. To right. Be fair. <laughs> so. I don't know, but that that's a really sticky story. Um I'm sure there's going to be more by the time we record next week. Maybe we'll update you in a few weeks, however this goes. I hope I'm able to come back on the 30th anniversary and say, hey, we're getting it released as a 2LP set. I'm buying the vinyl. What if they release it as the uh, the dungeon music for the, gal- the Luke Cave dungeon? If the Paul McCartney song is not in the dungeon, we have systematically failed as a civilization. No, I hope, I hope Paul McCartney is sitting at the end of the dungeon. Where the chest is, and he's playing the song while you open. I hope him and Zur are doing the slow dance emote together. Oh God! Can I do a Congo line with Paul McCartney in the dungeon? (laughs) (laughs) These are questions I need answered. I need somebody. Cosmo, DM me, man. We need to talk. Oh man, it's good times. Any final thoughts on this story before we? uh... Before we move into uh, Agar Scepter really quickly before Lower Corner. No, it. I'm just, it's a sad situation. I wish it would have happened. I wish things would have happened differently, but, you know, it is what it is, I suppose. So, that's it. Agar Scepter, man. So, you haven't done this, you haven't finished the quest yet. I, I was really enjoying the quest until the, the slog in the middle, right? Like, Oh, gotta go, you know, do the, do this, do that, do the astral alignment or crap. And like, I don't know, man. God, do, I had to do five of those to get my stuff done. I was just, I lost I've all done, will to live after that. I've done two and I'm at 74%. So that's where I'm at. And I was like, I got a, it's 1130. I should probably go to bed and B, I can't do this astral alignment stuff right now. I'll probably do it while I edit the show, honestly, but it's so I, I'm going to save most of my thoughts for next week because I want to talk about it when we have the full gun in front of us. Cause I feel like the catalyst really completes it. Mm-hmm. But I think right now, if you have, if you are able to pair that with a really good fusion mm-hmm. and a good linear fusion, like God, you're going to have an awesome, you're going to have an awesome time. Like I, when I was running the revenant subclass, I have the aspect that uh, creates the shards, just like this gun does when you get final blows. Mm -hmm. They give you your abilities back. I cannot emphasize how many throwing stars I had at any given time. Yeah. I was just constantly using abilities, throwing grenades. Like, they were just feeding into each other. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it felt good. It felt really, really good. Um I like the weapon a lot. I think it's unique among trace rifles. It, it and it needed to be because cold heart and Prometheus lens basically do nothing. Let's be honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, same with wave splitter. Like they're just they're three guns that I mean probably could be just legendaries nowadays. Yeah. Um, instead of year one exotics like they were, but ruinous effigy, divinity, and a your scepter all feel truly unique. And especially this with Divinity, I feel like these two have definitive purposes mm-hmm. in this game. Uh, I think Aegir Scepter is going to be used for a long time. Like, I can't wait to go into the Crucible with this mm-hmm. once we have the Catalyst. And just, I forget to use my super a lot. Yeah. But I would like to pair this with, pair this with my Stasis abilities, pair this with, uh, I joke that I may have a reason to run Arc Staff mm-hmm. in Crucible now because I like using those grenades and I like using that melee but i don't like the super let me drain my super and get some more power into this especially iron banner is coming up i think momentum control is back next week this gun this gun's gonna be used by everybody in momentum next week and i can't wait for it yeah 
It's going to be a blast. I, I, I want to say, so I, I just want to, I want to say that really quickly. I want to save most of my Aegir Scepter thoughts for next week. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about it once we have the catalyst in hand, we have the full gun in hand. We've had a few days with it. Um, we'll both have it unlocked and you know, I, God willing, the catalyst isn't too hard to unlock and I'll actually have it by Thursday. Um, we do know that's going to be a random drop from Astral Alignments, so I'm prepared to go do a million of those again just to get the stupid Catalyst. Great. It's a random drop from there? Mm-hmm. Mm. It's a random drop from the end chests. Gross. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Super gross. 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 It's so gross. I hate that but... so much. Oh, my gosh. And you're going to have to waste your uh, that currency on that second chest, too, aren't you? At least that's only a hundred. It's not charging like fucking five hundred like the Engrams do. I know, but still, it's like God. Yeah, I, it's the principle of the matter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's go to something that's not gross, though. Let's go to Lore Corner. All right, Lore Corner, Josh. It's my favorite time of the night. So we're gonna read from uh, the Ripples book again. Um, it's the seasonal book you get from listening to the radio conversations in the helm. Uh, this first one is Risen from Bones. Kelgarath, Night Champion of Death, kneels before his shrine of bone in the fog-ridden depths of the Ascendant Plain. Soulfire recedes into the ground around him. He places his forehead against the shrine, smudging a freshly bloodied sigil of Zivuarath. He has added so many layers, but this is the first time the blood is his own. He does so to show his devotion, to reject the heretic sister, to pledge himself anew to war. The Ascendant Sky churns around him and he breathes deeply. It's his first breath of this life. He looks to the shrine before him. Every vanquished contender, ground to meal, and packed between skulls to cement them in place. Trinkets of conquest and old spent weapons adorn the shrine from base to apex. He looks to them as he prepares to face his adversary. An empty ghost whose core he had gifted to defect to defected Scarlet Wizards. Its guardian had ended him many times, but he is Kelgarath, and through battle he is reborn. No guardian can escape him, for they are heralds of death, and he swims in their wake. His eyes drift to another conquest, crystalline implants torn from the forehead of an awoken Techian. He hunted her through the ley lines for three days, tracking her by the stench of her fear. When he found her, she brought the ascendant plane down on him. He did not fall for this trick twice. He caught her again with his next life, and the Techian's final words echoed in his thoughts. I still see the flecks of scarlet in your chitlin. How quickly you abandon your witch queen. Kelgarath recalls the night he renounced Sabathun, the night he had scoured the scarlet from his flesh on the serration beds deep within the hellmouth, the night Osiris slaughtered all Crota's kin. Sabathun was weak to allow their deaths. To see ground to the celebrant, to guardians, Zivorath avenged them. Zivorath took Osiris's light, and Kelgarath guzzled from it with vows of vengeance. He would prove his allegiance by stamping out any trace of the heretic sister. Herdru, his adversary, was a knight who still claimed fealty to Sabathun. Herdru would be an instrument of example. Through battle, Kelgarath would confirm his new god. Through blood, he would erase the name Sabathun and don that of Zivorath. He stands, bows, grips the cleaver and shield he will carry until he falls again. Herdru, he whispers to the bones. Tonight, he will purify himself in death. I feel like this guy is a boss that we're going to have to fight probably in the legendary version of the Shattered Realm activity. Yeah. Or he'll be somebody we fight towards the end of the season. Because why else would you get your own lore page? Or, I mean, do you have a, does he have a role to play down the line? We know that Bungie likes to lay breadcrumbs out ahead of time. Mm-hmm. Is this a guy that we're going to deal with in the Witch Queen? Maybe as a strike boss. Or maybe like a dungeon, you know? maybe around surrounding yeah, him or something. Yeah, a dungeon boss maybe. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. Zivo Rath, we know, is serving the true master behind the Black Fleet. I mean, maybe this is a strike boss. Maybe in the raid where you take down Zivo Rath, this is one of the mini bosses you have to go through. You know, I imagine him being like one of those knights in the Haunted Forest. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, we're, we'll talk about the Haunted Forest real fast after all this. So we did skip the uh, the calendar. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, yeah, the Haunted Forest. Let's go. Entry number four, art. <laughs> Petra Venge hangs her head and examines the hilt of her sheath knife. 
Transmat particles still swirl in the air around her like tiny flecks of dust as she steps forward back through the helm gate to answer her queen's summons. Marasov's voice washes over the chamber stone and crystal. He belongs here, Petra. This place draws his old self out. She pauses, knowing Petra will be silent while allowing her to deepen the words. You saw it too. He should have never been allowed to leave. I wish I hadn't, Petra says with a heavy sigh. How am I to proceed? Mara stands on the terrace above her. Give him only morsels of who he could be. Nothing substantial. He is a canvas on which work has already begun. I mean, only to guide that work to a familiar conclusion. Such things cannot be rushed. Petra shifts her stance anxiously. Y you're sure? Are you questioning me, Petra? Never, my queen. But I do worry that he is vulnerable to Sabathun's influence, Petra offers. She's clearly taken an interest in him for some time now, and he clearly reciprocates that interest. Your words hold no falsehood. You and I will mitigate this danger. Crow and Aldrin are to meet. It must be a subtle progression. Marasov leans over the terrace railing. I believe my brother's recovery is possible, Petra. Will you help me? Without a moment of hesitation, Petra responds. I will do anything you ask, my queen. But doubts sprout in her mind. If he does become problematic, Petra trails off searching for the right words. You needn't worry, Mara soothes. If Sabathun moves to exploit him... I will put an end to it myself. This is kind of ominous for what it means for uh, for Crow. We've yeah. seen some speculation in the last couple of weeks that people think, uh, is Crow possibly on the chopping block already? I personally don't think so after how much they've invested this year into Crow. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I do think he, I mean, he's pretty clearly going to find out who he was. Right. It's just, and, it's just a matter of who's going to tell can, him. Well, he confronted Petra in last week's uh, story mission where, you know, he hit, they held the knights to each other where he says, every other guardian is absolved of their past. Why am I treated differently? Mm -hmm. And he wonders that. And it's a fair question to ask. I mean, Cade was absolved of his. Zavala presumably had one. I mean, Shax was a warlord and has been forgiven, right? I mean, we don't know what our guardian's past is, but presumably, you know, we've moved on from that. He has a point. Why Why should his past as Ultron be used against him? You know, we've already seen, you know, how guardians would kill him repeatedly. I mean, it's, it's, it's what we talked about a couple months ago when we were talking about how, how is he going to be revealed. It's it's so... Right. This is, he's the one guardian that is in recent memory, right? Like... We knew who he was beforehand. Nobody else really knows or had any interactions really before, right? They'd, but only, Aldrin, heard, they'd only heard the stories. Right, but Aldrin has been around. Right. And then died and then came back as Crow within the realm of us playing Destiny, right? So, like, he's really the only one with a past that everybody knows about except for him. So... It's like this sticky situation, really. Yeah, I'm I'm really curious to see how they deal with this over the coming weeks and months because the God, you just you know at this point Sabathun's gonna tell him. Yeah. He's been trying to talk to her since she got put in the stone. Mm -hmm. And we just know at some point he's going to go and talk to her, and it's probably gonna go really badly. Like she's wanted this to go badly from the beginning. Mm-hmm. There was a reason why, as Osiris, she had us guide Crow to the city. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think expected Zavala to turn on him. Instead, Zavala picked him up mm -hmm. in an exact opposite manner that he executed Cade. Mm -hmm. When the portal was opened with the Vex, I think she was kind of hoping, like, ah, oh, maybe Crow will get blamed for this. And he didn't. We managed to shut the portal, and Saint didn't turn on Mithrax and things like that. Like... Mm -hmm. She she's underestimated the guardians at every turn, and that's going to ultimately be Sabathun is a lot like Oryx in that regard. Like it's going to be her undoing. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of how long until that happens, and who is going to be collateral damage. Mm -hmm. There is no doubt in my mind that if it comes down to Crow is going to be killed by Sabathun, that Mara will throw herself in between them. Yeah, that Mara would sacrifice herself for. Aldrin, knowing that he can live, I mean, first off, she's awoken, and they're awoken so they can live eternally to begin with, but that he could lead their people if need be. Mm -hmm. 
you know, he is still the Prince of the Reef, even if he's reborn. Right. You know, as Crow, like, he's, you know, he's a hunter. She's very upset, you know, in this week's dialogue, she's very upset that Crow is one of us now. There's a difference between us being the Guardian, because she trusts us, mm-hmm. and her brother being reborn as one. And it, it's almost that, because she says, had certain of our events transpired the way they were meant to, I would have wielded Aldrin Sav like Bearer. So it begs the question, did Mara try to intercept Crow before Spider found him? Right. Or before we came into contact with him? Like, basically, mm-hmm. it's essentially, like, once we came into contact with him, that was it. Like, when she there found was- out he was resurrected, did she try to go find him before right. he became a, quote-unquote, in the fold of the Guardians or before Spider found him to be Exactly. The- yeah. Yeah, that would have been an interesting turn too because like mm-hmm. oh well you have like, like she could have just explained to him oh you're my brother this is what happened this is what we went through together but now you're a light bearer or whatever and whatever i mean kind of manipulative but also like fair i guess if you're trying to to be expected yeah i mean there's probably nobody who understands the line between light and dark better than mara Sov. yeah you know, basically being, she's the second, she was the second of the Awoken, but she's the queen. And I mean, I do think at some point we're probably going through the portal to the distributary. Mm-hmm. We just are flat out. Mm-hmm. Now, whether that's to bring forth the rest of the Awoken or what purpose that serves, mm-hmm. I'm not sure. But it feels almost certain that we're going to go through that lapse in space time at some point. Mm-hmm. And when we do that, is it by the side of Mara and Uldren, or is it just us, Petra, and Crow going? Is right. Mara still there? Like, we still don't know what she was off doing this whole time. She just said she was gathering allies for the coming war. Right. What does that mean? You know, and, that, <laughs> and I, I still dwell on when we visited her in the court once, and she says, now go, my next guest does not take kindly to those that are born of the light. Mm-hmm. Or those who wield the light, like, who was it? Was it Keitel that she secretly met with? Was it, it wasn't Sabathun. Like, who is it? Mm-hmm. Who did she meet with at that point? And I, I think that's an intriguing question that we have to think about. Right. That I feel like will be revealed at some point this season. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Dude, there's every- a... Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say every time we talk about lore corner, it's like I get. I just want to know. I just, I just want to know <laughs> things, you know. Yeah, and I love that there's just so much. There's so much to speculate about, but we know we're going to get so much more story jammed down our throats. Like we're about halfway through the seasonal story. Well, the initial seasonal story right now. Mm-hmm. And I still wonder what does a six month story look like for the narrative? Because I mean, we know we're going to get story for the first, you know, seven or eight weeks. Mm -hmm. What does it look like beyond that? Like, surely you're not just going to leave the story hang for five months. I mean, you think there'll be like, like there's gotta be some sort of like almost epilogue ish style thing. Right. I would imagine that'll probably come like three or four weeks before the witch queen launches to give Mm -hmm. everybody enough time to do it. Kind of like how they brought Nocris in finally to the to that activity. Mm-hmm. I feel like maybe we will fight this night or like fight both of the knights in yeah. the ascendant plane and kill them for good. Right. Um, and that'll be how Sabathun escapes or something. I don't right. know. Like some something's got to happen there. Like we know what the end result is. It's how do we get there? Mm-hmm. And who has to die along the way? And also, do we go back to Destiny One Mars or not? Um. Mm. I don't know. Uh, any any final thoughts before we roll out of here, Corey? No, I'm I'm good. I'm just uh, looking forward to using this new exotic. I'm looking forward to trials. I'm looking forward to doing some more in-game stuff this weekend. It's gonna be a good the time. Battlefield Josh. delay basically means I'm going to play the entire October. The uh, that's what we were gonna do. We have a roadmap, kind of. Kind of. Kind of. And I say kind of because. It's a really bad roadmap. It looks more akin to, like, a promo... Well, I get that. That's the whole point. A promo graphic for, like, an expansion, though. Not like these uh, traditional roadmaps we've gotten used to. But, 
You look at it, August to September, Season of the Lost begins, cross-play, astral alignment, exotic quest, revamp trials, blah, blah, blah. October through November, we get our first look at that dino armor. I swear to God, that raptor head is never coming off. Dude, it looks so that cool. That thing looks awesome. Dude, it looks like 10 times better than it did in the drawing. It looks so good, and it already looked good in the drawing. Yeah. Um, Festival of the Lost, Masks, Candy, and Haunted Sectors Activity. The Haunted Forest is dead, people. It's gone. It's dead. Gone. Finally. Everybody, it's, it's gone. gone. Haunted Forest, gone. 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 Finally. Because I swear to God, if that was the event, I was taking all of October off after buying my dino armor. Um, Grandmaster Nightfalls will be live in October. It looks like Astral Alignment and Shattered Realm will get legendary versions. And then December through February, you get another look at that Thorn Armor, the Gallarhorn, the Bungie 30th Anniversary event with the new dungeon, the exotic Gallarhorn quest, six-player offensive activity, iconic weapons from Bungie's past, and much more, along with moments of triumph and the dawning. That's the intriguing part from Bungie's past, not Destiny's past. Bungie's past. Well, so we know that we're getting weapons from Bungie's past. We're getting Thousand right. Yard Stare, and we're getting AS Luna for sure. Right. We're getting the shotgun from Marathon, and we're getting um, we're getting another weapon, I believe. I forget what the other weapon is. It's not from Marathon. It's from something else. I guarantee to you we are getting the Halo 1 pistol. Yeah, it makes no sense for them. Like if you're talking, you're talking iconic weapons from Bungie's past. Like, how do you not put the Halo one Magnum in this? I know it's that is all the one of, that makes the most sense. I'm waiting for it. All of Halo's weapons are, are like most of them are super iconic. But like that Halo one pistol, when you're playing hang them high with the pistols, yep. three shots across the map, you're dead. You're dead. Oh, dude, boarding action with the pistol. Yeah. Uh, I, I would argue it, uh, if I had to pick three Halo weapons to come over, it would be the Halo 1 pistol, it would be the plasma rifle, or the plasma pistol. Like, I'll take one of the two plasma weapons, and I'd have to say the Halo sniper. Those are the ones I would bring over. I would love to see the Needler, but I don't know how that would work. We already have it. It's called Telesto. Leave it alone. Oh God, the Needler's going to break the game. <laughs> I, I bet. What if the Needler was just a? Said that the, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, what if the Needler is just an ornament for the Telesto? I would love it. I would buy it so fast. I'm going to buy every. Fu- I'm going to buy every fucking ornament that's Halo I know. related. I know. In this store, I'm going to spend so much real money, or I'm going to spend all the bright dust I've been hoarding because as of this afternoon, Corey, I have cracked 90k. Hold on, I got to write this down, Josh, because we're keeping a tracker on the Twitter. Account I am now. at ninety thousand and fifty. Hmm. Okay, I wrote it down. There will be an update on the Twitter account tomorrow morning at some point. We are seeing how long, because I, I will hit 100K this season. It is a matter of how long it will take. Uh, it will probably be in the early weeks of October when I finally do it. Because <sighs> I have about 6,000 more to go in my season pass. And I have a lot of challenges that will require that will get reward bright test between now and then as well. The hope is by the time Festival of the Lost begins, I hit 100K and then I just start buying everything in sight. Yep. Buying the dino armor. And then when the 30th anniversary event hits, oh boy, oh boy. Within reason, I will spend a lot of bright dust. Mm. Within reason. I don't want to drop below a certain amount. I still feel like silver is in your in your future, Josh. Oh, silver is absolutely in my future. <laughs> I bought the conga line emote, okay? Silver is absolutely in my future. Mm, my God. Man. God, that was a good sandwich. Yeah. Well, thank you for literally milking it the entire episode, Josh. You're welcome. I hate you. What do you you say we get out of here, Josh? Let's get out of here. I want to thank everybody for watching and or listening. If you want to watch us live on Thursday nights, twitch.tv slash Tower Casuals, 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. I'm going to start doing that. Also, I'm going to try to – I think I'm going to stream – two times a week here anyway on this channel just destiny stuff probably tuesday nights for reset and then friday or saturday on the weekends at some point i don't know there'll be a schedule just pay attention i guess at some point at at tower casuals on twitter pay attention uh you can email the show 
towercasuals at gmail.com. You can follow us. Josh, where can we follow you? Twitter, at Josh underscore Finn, two ends. Also, thank you my return to Twitch. Same screen handle. Planning on playing some Deathloop on Saturday. Mm, I hear it's good. I hear good things. I hear very good things about it. I'm very excited. Very, I'm very excited to watch you play it. So, <clears throat> you can find me at I am Corey and HD on Twitter. You can find me hosting this very show and doing cool things on the internet. Thank you everybody for watching and or listening. We will see you next week. Bye, Guardians. Bye bye. Mm, bye bye now. See you next time. Hmm.